Hi, welcome to Virtual Worship with the Table United Church of Christ of La Mesa. I'm Pastor Kelly, and it is great to gather with you here online to worship God in community. This Sunday is the fourth Sunday of Advent, and so it is also our Christmas pageant Sunday. And this year, we will be retelling this ancient story through a very contemporary 2020 medium. Almost all of it has been recorded using Zoom. And so I hope that you can enjoy this fresh take told from all of our own homes of this story of love and joy and hope made flesh. I also want to name a few things coming up this week since this is the week of Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Uh, our Christmas Eve service begins at five with a brass carol extravaganza that Jim Tompkins McLean, our music director, has put together. And that will be followed by our Christmas Eve service on Zoom with pre-recorded elements beginning at 5.30. So the link has been in your e-news on Friday and it will also be mailed out, emailed out later this week as well, right beforehand. So as you gather for our Christmas Eve service at 5.30 p.m., I invite you to make sure that you've got a candle, at least one per household, because we will light our candles and pass the light as we sing Silent Night as we so often do when we can physically gather. So make sure you've got at least one candle. Your Advent wreaths are great for that, and we will light those at the end of the service. And then I also want to invite you on Christmas Day. I know many of us will be finding ourselves alone this year, but we want you to not be alone. We want to invite you to a gathering of caroling and Christmas memory sharing, storytelling, bring Christmas poetry or your favorite Christmas scripture and join your church family and friends to celebrate the birth of Jesus, the coming of light and life and love. And so now I invite you to light a candle or light your advent wreath to settle into the space wherever you are knowing that we are connected by Christ's spirit even across physical distance it is good to gather here with you so let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship Shepherds watch our keeping. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Why lies he in such mean estate where ox and ass are feeding? Good Christians fear for sinners hear the silent word is pleading. Nails, spear shall pierce him through the cross be born for me, for you. Hail, hail the Word made flesh, the babe, the son of Mary. So bring him incense, gold, and myrrh, come peasant king to own him, the king of kings, salvation brings let loving heart enthrone him praise praise the song 
on high the Virgin sings her lullaby. Joy, joy, for Christ is born, the babe, the son of Mary. I used to sing love with love. I used to feel love. I used to think I had to earn love. I used to think love was fragile. I used to think love, when shared, would be half, not doubled. But then I learned that love is a river, forging paths where none have gone before. But then I learned that love is a song, it keeps melody into my memory. But then I learned love is a spirit. The more there is, the more there is. But then I learned love is strong. It casts out all fear. Today we light the candle of love as a reminder that it is from love that we are made. It is by love that we are empowered. It is in love that we are raised. It is for love that we are set. You were made from love. To be loved. To give love. Let us magnify God's love today and always. Amen. 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 Good morning. Jason Guy here with uh, today's scripture reading. Today's scripture comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 45. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative, Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And there ends our reading for today. May we be blessed with understanding 
in the reading and the hearing of these words. And they all lived happily ever after. The end. That was a good one. All right. Wait a minute. Good night, Joss. Sleep tight. Wait a minute, Mom. Don't leave yet. Can you stay a, a while longer? What's going on, Joss? You need to go to sleep. I'm scared. That book made me nervous. And now I'm thinking about all the things I'm afraid of. Like what? Well, let's see. There's airplanes, bees, coronavirus, dogs, fire, ghosts, um, Lice, mice, nighttime questions, roller coasters, teasing, worms, x rays, and zoom. Zoom? Did you just list all your fears in alphabetical order? Whoa, I can relate. I feel afraid sometimes. So how do I feel better right now? I can't sleep I'm when I'm scared. Well, stories help. When I'm afraid or I am worrying, I remember that I am a part of a story that is way bigger than myself. And God's story is full of people who were sometimes afraid. You know, I think I have time to tell you one more story tonight. This part, of, this part of God's story is during a time when many people were afraid of many things, just like us. It all begins in Nazareth, a town in Galilee with a woman named Mary. Oh, hi. Uh, welcome. Welcome to my home. Do you want to talk to me? We haven't met before, have we? Do you want to hear what I have to say? I, I do. Um, pardon me. <laughs> um, uh, let me start over. Uh, greetings, favored one. God is with you. Um, what kind of greeting is that? Don't be afraid, Mary. Uh, Mary, you have found favor with God. And now you are going to have a baby. You'll name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. And uh, his kingdom will have no end. Mm -hmm. How can this be? How is this going to happen? It's good questions. Uh, well, you see, Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, that child I talked about to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. Also, your relative Elizabeth is going to have a baby, even though people thought it would be impossible, but nothing is impossible with God. Was all of that a question? <laughs> well, are you asking me if I want to do this? Good question. Yes, yes, I am. Yeah. Uh, well, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to this message. I need to see Elizabeth.
Elizabeth, are you home? I'm coming in. Good, Mary. Mary. Hey, oh, Mary, I have to tell you something. You are so blessed among women, and the baby in your womb is blessed too. So I could tell just a moment the sound of your voice in, entered my ears, the baby in my womb here, just like leap for joy. <sighs> Elizabeth, I am also bursting with good news. God took one good look at me, and look what happened. I'm the most blessed woman on earth. What God has done for me will never be forgotten. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the God who knocked the powerful off their thrones and lifted up the lowly. <sighs> so, uh, can I stay with you for a few months? <laughs> Mary's pregnant? How is that possible? You aren't married yet. And the law says that is not good. Not good at all. She claims that this child, the child she carries, is actually God's child. My only option is to marry her and divorce her quietly. That will save my reputation at least. Oh, Mary. Uh, uh, hey, Joseph, um, son of David. Hey there, do not be afraid to get married. You see, God's Holy Spirit, that's the one who made Mary pregnant. Um, she will have a son, and you'll name him Jesus. God saves, obviously, um, because he will save his people from their sins. Oh, <sighs> Mary. I'm going to marry Mary, Are we, and we're going to have a baby, I name him Jesus, and I'm going to be a dad. I need to pack. Hold on, I have questions. Why is Joseph packing a bag? Why well, was Joseph afraid about Mary having a baby? Do some angels visit people in dreams? Why did Mary stay at Elizabeth's house? Who names a kid God saves? Why is everyone making such a big deal about this? It's just a baby. This story is so weird. I just... Yeah, I don't know what the answer to most of those questions is. This is just a bigger than life kind of story. And there are a lot of unexplainable and miraculous parts. That sounds just like what Pastor Kelly would say when I ask tough questions. Good. I'm glad I sound like Pastor Kelly because we just don't have all the answers. Now, I do know the answer to one of those questions. Why is Joseph packing? To understand that, we need to meet the emperor. Citizens of Rome, it is I, your Lord and Savior, Good Shepherd, Light, Way, and Prince of Peace, Caesar Augustus. First, I want to say you're welcome for all the great things I've done for you. There's never been an emperor as powerful and glorious as me. My empire is huge. You people are obedient. I'm saving you all, all of you. And you owe me so much, so much. Citizens, I want to count you. Yeah, let's get a good head count so that you can all pay me what I am owed. Go to your hometown and register your family so that you can show proper appreciation of my awesomeness. I decree it to be so. Farewell, my faithful children. May you know my magnificent ways. Farewell.
Okay, the good news is, I think I found us a place to stay. Finally, this baby isn't going to wait much longer. Where are we staying? Oh, did you get a room at that nice inn I like? The one with the good breakfast? Um, not exactly. It was full. Oh, no. What are we going to do? Sleep outside with shepherds? Stay in a stable with donkeys? What? No. Who would do that? Joseph, this baby is coming soon. I know. I know. The guest rooms are full, but I found an innkeeper who will let us stay in a small space in his home. Oh, good. Yeah, it's, it's a nice space. And lots of, with lots of hay, maybe a few animals. <sighs> All right. Let's do this. Awesome. Okay, stop there. What? Why? I don't want to think... I don't... I don't think I want to hear about the birth part. Okay, we can talk about that later. The Bible doesn't really tell us anything about the birth anyway. It just says that Mary had the baby and wrapped him in strips of cloth and put him in a feeding trough. That's it. But those are important details to remember for the next part of our story. It takes place in a field. Okay, keep going. There were shepherds living outside in the fields nearby, watching over their sheep. They were about to be frightened by some powerful messengers from God, but they would soon realize they did not have to be afraid. Glory to God in the highest. Uh, ahem. Glory to God. Is this thing even working? Am I on mute? Are you people even listening? <sighs> Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. That's all. Goodbye. So, you both saw that, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, I did. Bye. Yep, that happened. Bye. Well, I mean, we're going to go, right? Yes, we are going. We have to go. Do we bring the sheep? I think we have to. Uh, yeah, we want to come. Take us with you. Uh. Uh, what were those signs again? A baby wrapped in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Uh. We won't forget. Let's go. You too, sheep. Come on. That was a miracle. It was exactly how the angels had described. The baby was wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Friends, we have seen something amazing tonight. I don't know about you, but it feels like it feels like the world is changing. Yeah, you're right, but why do you think we get to see it? I mean, nobody cares about us. We're shepherds. We're poor, and we don't have very much power. I have no idea, but the baby's mother, Mary, 
acting like this was exactly what was supposed to happen. Like this was meant for people like us. Maybe this baby will lift up the lowly. And bring down the lofty. Wouldn't that be something? Sure would be. I believe there is no limit to what this baby might be able to do. Hey, shepherds, was that star there last night? I don't think I've ever seen that one before. Twinkle, twinkle. Hello, and welcome to our observatory. We are the wise men. Wise people. The magi. We are really more like scientists. Astronomers. We study the stars. We study the stars so well that some, so when something changes, we notice immediately. And we just noticed a new star. We must follow our scientific, scientific instincts to, and find out why there's a new star in the sky. We now begin our journey. Are we there yet? You literally just asked that. Now? Yes, yes. It looks like we're here. Here it is, Bethlehem. Let's look up the local king so we can get some more information. Did, did somebody say king? That would be me. I'm the big cheese around here. Everybody's talking about it. They all say that I'm a powerful king. The best king Bethlehem has ever seen. We got it. Best king ever, huh? So we're here because we're looking for the newly born king. Child born king of the Jews. We observed his star at its rising. And we've come to honor him. Ah, will you excuse me for a moment? I need to make a call. Hey, come in through to my smart people. Hi, this is your king, the very best king. I need to know, according to your research, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Bethlehem. Are you sure? All right. That'll be all. Bye. <sighs> Hi, wise folks. So, yeah, this is great. Go on and find this child and pay him honor. And get uh, back to me about this so that I, too, can honor him. Sure. Okay. We can do that. Let's get out of here. <sighs> when we left Herod, he decided to sit around and be jealous and plan his revenge. He felt very threatened there was a new leader that, that people were excited to meet. But we found Jesus and brought gifts to this special child. We brought gold. Frankincense. And myrrh. Usually these gifts are for royalty. Powerful people. Grown men. We brought these gifts to a tiny, weak, oppressed child. Even though we didn't know exactly what was going on, we knew this was important. This good news would turn everything upside down. Oh, by the way, we didn't return to that wicked King Herod. No, no way. We were warned in a dream to take a different way home. You might say we took the scenic route. And now we return to watching the stars.
wise people really were brave. They honored the king God had chosen, brought in presents, disobeyed the order of the king Herod, and made it home safe. Yes, they were brave and determined. Everyone in the story was, I think. From Mary and Joseph to the shepherds and the Magi, they all recognized that the birth of Jesus was going to change the world. Sheridan, are you feeling safe and sleepy yet? Our story is coming to an end. Oh, yes, I feel safe and sleepy, but this isn't really the end. No, why not? It's bedtime. We need to get some sleep. Mom, this is just the beginning. Jesus was born, he grows up, he changes water to wine, he teaches, he heals, he flips the tables, he... Yes, yes, you're right. Jesus' birth is just the beginning. We have a lot to talk about, but it's late. Tonight, let's focus on this one special moment, this one night that brought us Jesus. Okay, that makes sense. This is a good story. God's story is unfolding. More good news every day. And in the end, all things will be made right. That doesn't mean we won't be afraid along the way. But we can trust that love and justice will have the final word. Speaking of the final word, let's have a final word from Mary, mother of Jesus. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. For you, God, have looked with favor on the lowliness of your servants. Surely, for now on, all generations will call me blessed. For you, the Mighty One, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. Your mercy is for those who fear God, for generation to generation. You, O oh God, have shown strength with your arms. You have scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. You, God, have brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have helped your servant Israel in remembrance of your mercy, according to the promises you made to our ancestors to Abraham and Sarah, and to their descendants forever. <laughs> Truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break for the slave is our brother. And in his name all oppression shall see Sweet hymns of joy In grateful chorus raise We let all within us praise his holy name Fall on your knees Oh, hear the angel voice say Christ was born. Oh, night, a oh, holy night. Oh, night divine. And so now we offer up the prayers of the people. You can do so in a few ways. You can either put your prayers into the chat bar here on the side, and we can be in prayer with one another in real time during worship here. You can also submit your prayer requests to officeuccclm at gmail.com, and we can be in prayer with one another throughout the week via our weekly e-news. And so I invite you to join your hearts with me in prayer now. God of love and hope, we come into this week where we are invited to follow the light wherever it leads us. May it give us courage 
such that it sings forth from our hearts. Courage to glimpse the power of your justice, O God, made real, the power of your justice made so clear that we're singing it and living it and hoping for it and working for it as though it has already happened, that it's that real God, that tangible to us. May we also, as we hear these stories of welcome, of accompaniment, of new visions of kindness and love. May we be mindful of those who are lonely, those who are hurting, those who are afraid. This is a time where it is hard to know what to anticipate. It's hard to glimpse what is ahead. May we find kind and generous companions along this uncertain way. And may we have an eye to those who we can walk with. May we have an eye towards how we can accompany and be present for one another. For this is a time where things can feel lonely, God. We pray for all of those, especially who are in the hospital right now, who are ill, whose bodies are aching, who feel breathless, and who may feel very alone. May they know the comfort of your presence, God, that never leaves us, no matter what. And we pray for all those who are working in healthcare, all those who are caring for those who are ill and dying. May they find wells of strength and may they be offered generous respite, God. May there be spaces of rest and recovery. May all those who are searching for grace in these times find it in surprising and joyful ways. May we know that we can still be connected with one another. And may we find the oomph to reach out. And may we find the inspiration to call someone who we haven't talked to for a while, trusting that we are all yearning for connection, God. We lift up all of these prayers and more through your son, Jesus, who came like a person, a human being just like us, to know the graces and the pains of our world and to share them with us. We ask all these things in your son's name, God. Amen. Good morning. I'm Barbara Thiss, and I'm happy to be worshiping with you today. For our offertory, I would like to share part of a quote from St. Francis of Assisi that I feel applies to our church community. For it is in giving that we receive. Looking back over this last year and all the challenges that we have faced, our small church in La Mesa has been able to accomplish so much. Your donations have allowed us to continue to pay our staff, provide support to those in need, send out announcements, newsletters, and prayer requests to keep us all informed, do much needed work on our building and grounds, touch lives of people that had not yet experienced our church family, and so much more. It is amazing what we can do together, what we can't do alone. You understand giving. I hope you feel the love and support that UCC has been able to provide. As we finish off 2020, 
Help us stay strong by continuing your support. Go to our website at tableucc.org and click on the donate button to pay via PayPal or get the address and mail your checks to UCCLM. Remember to get your tax-deductible donations in early so you get credit for 2020. Thank you and bless you for all you do to support our mission and ministries. Amen. And so now, beloveds, as you go forth from this time, may you, like Joseph, find inspiration and wisdom to embrace the unexpected. May you, like Elizabeth, offer welcome and kindness to those who feel lonely. May you, like the shepherds, face down fear for the sake of wonder. Like the Magi, may you follow the light down new pathways. And like Mary, may you be so in love with God that your courage breaks forth from your heart like a song. May you go in peace. May you be well. Amen. <laughs>